of the M that is in our name, Wakefield Memorial High School. A dedication to those men and women who dedicated their lives to uphold the freedoms and liberties that we enjoy each day. Today, hopefully, will help us better understand and appreciate what we learn in our history classes. Winston Churchill shared words to be mindful of. All the great things are simple, and many can be expressed in a single word. Freedom, justice, honor, duty, mercy, and hope. Today our guests are here with us at WMHS to honor those who are not here. To honor those who stood for freedom, justice, with duty, mercy, and hope. Thus we celebrate Memorial Day. Today, as always, we are truly humbled and honored to welcome veterans from all branches of the armed services, armed forces. They have served our nation from World War II through Korea, Vietnam, Gulf War, Desert Storm, Iraqi freedom, Afghanistan, and the current war on terrorism, as well as the current locations and various locations in the U.S. and around the world. Many of our guests are WMHS graduates, teachers, residents, family members, and friends, or from various surrounding communities. Be mindful of their courage, integrity, and selflessness. Be mindful and listen to your classmates explain America's history and of symbols of freedom and remembrance. Be mindful of those who make you call. Veterans, active U.S. service personnel, our guests, Town Administrator Mr. Bangham, Dr. Smith, faculty, staff, and of course the students of Wakefield Memorial High School. It is a privilege to welcome you all on behalf of the WMHS Administration for our annual Memorial Day Assembly. For the freshmen in the audience, this is the first time you'll be experiencing this special occasion. Our upperclassmen have had an opportunity to be part of this assembly in various capacities over the years. And I would like to take, like you all to take note of the value of the sophomores, juniors, and our seniors, and specifically for today's ceremony. The value that they place on being here and sharing this experience with the honored veterans who have joined us today. I'd also like to recognize the efforts of Mr. O'Brien, Ms. Lopez, Mr. Rossi, and all of the other teachers in the Social Studies Department who have contributed to organizing this ceremony. I'd like to thank Mr. Banker and Ms. Morrow for their music and choral accompaniment, as well as obviously the students involved in that. I know you'll leave here today with a greater appreciation for the importance of Memorial Day because of the presentations planned. Thank you all for your attention and I wish you all a safe and enjoyable Memorial Day weekend. Perhaps the clearest representation of American freedom and the sacrifice required to obtain it is the American flag. Please welcome Aidan Coleman and Cameron Hart to remark on the meaning of the flag. For more than 200 years, the American flag has been the symbol for our nation's strength and unity. It's been a source of pride and inspiration for millions of citizens. The American flag has been a prominent icon in our national history. On January 1st, 1776, the Continental Army was reorganized with the Congressional Resolution, which placed American forces under George Washington's control. On that New Year's Day, the Continental Army was laying siege to Boston, which had been taken over by the British Army. Washington ordered the brand new flag hoisted above his base in the prospect of hell. It had 13 red and white stripes in the British Union Jack in the upper left hand corner. Today, the flag consists of 13 horizontal stripes, 7 red alternating with 6 white. The stripes represent the original 13 colonies. The stars represent the 50 states of the Union. The colors of the flag are symbolic as well. Red symbolizes hardiness and valor. White symbolizes purity and innocence. Blue represents vigilance, perseverance, and justice. The 
The flag represents all those who stand together here in the USA who are upholding the same belief in liberty, freedom, and the pursuit of happiness. Please rise for the posting of the colors and remain standing to say the Pledge of Allegiance. Cindy Flanagan and Tommy Lucy to share the meaning of Memorial Day. Memorial Day began after the Civil War, the bloodiest war in American history. In order to remember and honor the great number of those lost in battle, the families of dead soldiers would decorate their graves with flowers. In 1866, Waterloo, New York celebrated the first official observance of Memorial Day. This was a community-wide day of remembrance where flags and flowers were placed on the graves of soldiers. In 1868, General John A. Logan, leader of an organization for Civil War veterans, established a National Day of Remembrance on May 3rd. General Logan called this holiday Decoration Day. By 1890, all the northern states had made General Logan's Decoration Day an official state holiday, while the southern states celebrated the remembrance of their dead on different days throughout the year. Originally, Memorial Day's purpose was only to remember those who died in the Civil War, but it gradually became known as a date to remember all those who have given their lives in battle. In 1968, Congress declared Memorial Day to be a federal holiday celebrated on the last Monday of May. Memorial Day is celebrated on the last Monday of May remembrance for those who died while in service in the United States. Memorial Day isn't just the unofficial start of the summer. It's a day that honors the millions of courageous American men and women and their families who made this country so special. We honor those who made the ultimate sacrifice, giving their lives for their country. We remember those who fought, dating back to troops who fought in the Revolution, to troops in the Civil War, to troops in World War I, to troops who dedicated their lives to fight Nazi soldiers on the bloody Normandy beaches, troops in the Korean War, to troops in the Vietnam War, and to troops in the recent wars like the war in Iraq and the war in Afghanistan. On this day, we visit and decorate the graves of our fallen soldiers with flowers and American flags. As you enjoy yourselves at cookouts and pool parties this weekend, make sure you uh, take a moment to remember those who have fallen to protect our freedom. Please be seated. It is largely agreed that there is no better remembrance of fallen heroes than Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. To explain its significance and recite it, please welcome Ben Kelly, Abigail Amatucci, Ashley Sullivan, and Malik Green.
1863, the Battle of Gettysburg was fought in the town of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. A unique victory, it was the battle that turned the war in their favor. In addition to being one of the most important battles of the Civil War, it was also the costliest land battle, taking many Union and Confederate lives. Four and a half months later, on Thursday, November 19th, a dedication of the Soldiers' National Cemetery took place at the site of the battle. At this dedication, popular war reader Edward Everett would go on to give a powerful two-hour speech. But what would follow was a speech that would end up being much more powerful. Abraham Lincoln spoke for two minutes in what is now known as the Gettysburg Address. Beginning with the famous line, four score and seven years ago, Lincoln would go on to craft a speech that emphasized human equality and the importance of the government for the people, as well as expanding the Civil War as a fight for human rights. In his address, Lincoln remarked that the United States was one for liberty and equality, but the nation had been torn apart. The Battle of Gettysburg was very gruesome, and even though the Union won, there were numerous deaths. The Gettysburg Address reminded the Union soldiers of what they were fighting for, bringing this country back together to be not only states, but United States. After the battle, Lincoln said it was up to the limit to persist with this crucial cause and honor the fallen soldiers who have risked their lives to keep their beloved nation whole. Even though soldiers had died during the battle, they would not be disregarded, but admired for their bravery and dedication. The war was not over, and this battle and address proved to be a turning point that boosted the morale of the Union and to knock it up on their significant cause. Even to this day, the Gettysburg Address has served as a source of nationalism for soldiers and other Americans in their everyday lives. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty, and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation, or any nation so conceived and so dedicated, can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who have gave their lives that that nation might win. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But, in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot follow this ground. The brave men, the living and dead, who struggle here have consecrated. Far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little know, we will long remember what we see here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task of our before us. That from these wandered dead we take increased devotion to that cause for say being the last whole measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have been a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people by the people for the people shall not perish from here.
In uncertain times through history, freedom around the world has been threatened. It is largely because of the sacrifice of American heroes that these freedoms are secured. Please welcome Anna Lucas, Patrick Almeida, Kayla Lima, Andrew Miller, Bobby Keegan, Brianna Randaza, Mark Balakowicz, Patrick Roach, Cole Grayson, Ali Patch, and Haley Patel to summarize America's awards. Our first war, the American Revolution, claimed 10,623 American casualties during the years from 1775 until 1773. Casualties are men and women killed, captured, or missing in action through engagement with an enemy. The War of 1812 was fought between the years of 1812 to 1815. In that time, it claimed 6,765 American casualties. The Mexican War was an armed military conflict between the United States and Mexico. It lasted from 1846 to 1848 and resulted in 17,435 American casualties. The Civil War lasted from 1861 to 1865 with over a million casualties and is considered America's most costly war. The Spanish American War claimed 4,108 American casualties between the years of 
Please welcome Alex Jolly, Devin O'Brien, Alec Pascantilli, Charlie Sr., Hannah Jettick, Emily Roberts, and Jillian Fiore. After each name is said, for the veteran please stand and be acknowledged. Uh, Bill Ty served in the Air Force from 1943 to 1945 during World War II. Anthony Gazia served in the Army during 1951 to 1952 during Korea. <laughs> Sam Stella served in the Army from 1967 to 1970, based in Okinawa during Vietnam. Morris Morris served in the Army from 1946 to 1948 during World War II. Walter Pfeiffer served in the Navy from 1950 to 1954 in Korea. Justin Mayo has been serving as Lieutenant in the Coast Guard from 2009 to now. Carolyn Bowling served in the American Legion Auxiliary. Nick Giacobbe served in the Army in 19, from 1956 to 1958 during the Korean War. Altran Baghdad to serve in the Army in 1950 during the Korean War. <laughs> Charles Atkins served in the Navy from 1943 to 1950 during World War II and the Korean War. <laughs> Tom Baru served in the Air Force from 1966 to 1970 in Vietnam. Kevin Sheeler served in the Army from 1989 to 1995. Tom Lyons served in the Marines from 1967 to 1970 in the Vietnam War. Sean Smith served in the Army from 1993 to 1997 in the Gulf War. In the Navy, he served from 1987 to 1990. Kirk McKenna, in the Army Reserve, served from 1984 to 1992. Paul Lewis Jr. served in the Army from 1972 to 1992. Jay Panette on the Marines from 1973 to 1960, 1996 in the Gulf War. Karen Berg fought in the Air Force from 1995 to 2016 in Afghanistan. 
Felix Freeman fought in the Navy from 1970 to 1974. Let's have one more round of applause for him. Music, being the universal language, is often used to express gratitude towards and remember our fallen veterans. Please welcome, under the direction of Mr. Bankard, the Wakefield Memorial High School Wind Ensemble to perform our resources, Pride of America. To our welcome veterans, please stand for acknowledgement when your branches serve the song is played.
would like to recognize Red Marshall, who served in the Marines from 1974 to 1994. I would now like to welcome Ms. Lopez to introduce our next speakers. Decorate the graves of the Union War dead with flowers. 
by the 20th century, competing union and Confederate holiday traditions celebrated on different days had merged in one day to visually extend to honor all Americans who died by military service. Unfortunately, many people see Memorial Day as an unofficial start to soccer. For the past couple of centuries, the United States has been involved in many wars, conflicts, and military interventions. So often, we forget we have a freedom we take for granted. Our flag is a daily reminder of the men and women who have lost their lives for you and for them. Their sacrifices have afforded us many freedoms and rights. One example that stands in my, in my mind as a veteran and former athlete is the NFL controversy with Colin Kaepernick. He chose to protest when he felt as a country of oppression and bigotry by taking a knee when our national anthem and song. Then others began to fall. Another, another example is one day I was driving home from the high school. A United States flag had blown into the middle of Montreal's Avenue. I pulled over to pick the flag up out of the road. As I was waiting, I would sell cars, drive right over, right over. This really angered me. Our flag should be treated with the utmost respect at all times for what it stands for. A free country bought for by the blood and sacrifice of those who serve and die to keep us free. See, freedom is not free. It always comes with a price. Having served in the military for our country, this has instilled in me an even greater pride for the sacrifices made throughout our country's history by men and women of the armed forces and their families. Now back to Colin Cameron. Actions, what he perceived as an exercise of his rights, don't confuse patriotism and pride in the flag with no victory and oppression. Our land is free because of the brave. Just because you're allowed to do something doesn't mean you should. Again, freedom is not free. When you choose to take a knee here in our national anthem, Although you have the right to, you take for granted the men and women and families who have sacrificed for you to protect you and your rights and defend our way of life. Until you contribute to America's fight for freedom, as these veterans have, you should not be disrespected. And that is exactly what people are doing when they engage in such things. The men and women who have fought and served are the ones who have earned this so-called right. But anyone who has ever served would never dream of exercising the right to take a knee. I would venture to say that most, that most of those who have participated in this specific protest, freedom has not cost them anything. Remember these sayings. Enjoy your long weekend. Body or your boat, but never forget the Memorial Day is a holiday to honor a very real sacrifice. Remember to fall under their service and sacrifice and rejoice in your freedom. All those who are here today, I challenge you to make it a practice in life to take the time to tell a veteran, thank you for your service. Only two defining forces have ever often died for you, Jesus Christ and the American soldier. One died for your soul, the other died for your freedom. May God bless America.
Mr. Smith, on behalf of Wakefield Memorial High School, I'd like to present you with this Memorial Day Assembly plaque. Thank you for your service and for your time here today. Now I have the honor of introducing a second speaker here today. We're very lucky to have with us Lieutenant Justin Mayer, a Wakefield graduate of the class of 2009. Lieutenant Mayer. <laughs> Lieutenant Mayo has served in the Coast Guard from 2009 to the present. And he is here today to talk with us about service from a graduate's point of view. Please welcome, as you already have, Lieutenant Justin Mayer. Thank you so much and good morning, Wakefield High. Thank you to Mr. Smith for letting me follow uh, such a wonderful speech. Uh, it's really such a pleasure to be back here on Memorial Day, the special day we've uh, dedicated to remembering and honoring our heroes. And without a doubt, remember and honor are the important things that we do today. But my question to everybody is how do we do that? And there can be many ways. If you haven't found your own way yet, I invite you to listen to me for just a few minutes. And I've got three challenges for you that might help me get started. I remember being in your shoes. There's a lot going on in your mind right now. Whether you're an underclassman thinking about final exams coming up, a junior planning on visiting some colleges or finding a job this summer, or if there's any senior students trying to maximize the good times before graduation. And definitely enjoy every minute of that. Even though the seniors are probably having the most fun right now, I envy the freshmen the most. So many opportunities are provided you. You've got three years left to do as much as you can, whether it's the football team, the drama club, or the math team. I urge you to challenge yourself. My personal choice is for soccer, track, and the jazz club. Although I didn't continue a single one of those after high school, they helped me develop as a person. Step outside your comfort zone. Learn from the achievements and from your mistakes, and you will learn new things about yourself. Make long-lasting friendships and become a leader. And that's the first challenge. Be a leader. Everyone we're honoring today was a leader. Leadership is needed on the battlefield, on ships, and at training camps. But just as, 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 just as it is needed in those places, we need leadership in everyday life. As students in high school, you can encourage one another on so many levels. Be approachable to one another and have a genuine interest in each other's lives. When you pass each other in the hallway, say hello. Take a step further, say hello, and call each other by name. The Armed Forces Officer is a book written by multiple generals from the Department of Defense. It addresses leadership and emphasizes the importance of remembering persons' name. It says, men will warm toward leaders who remember their names and learn to resent the ones who forget. It also says, the act of recognizing the worthwhile traits in another person is both the test and making of character. In the end, it all comes down to compassion and respect. Respect is one of the three Coast Guard core values. Every service has its core values. Coast Guard has honor, respect, and devotion to duty. It stands to reason that just as the services have core values, every person should have their own core values. And that's the second challenge. Define your own core values. Choose what is important to you and try to live with them in mind. It can be honesty, loyalty, perseverance, Fairness, fun, choose what's important and use that in your leadership. Now the third and final challenge I have for you ties everything else together. Serve the community in some way. This is the best way to honor our fallen heroes. There are hundreds of ways you can do this, whether it be by regularly assisting at a food shelter, tutoring underprivileged children, volunteering at a library, coaching sports, military service, Today, Memorial Day is not usually considered to be about you or me. It's about honoring fallen heroes who have gave up their lives for their country. So when we listen to the bagpipes, the beautiful sound of the taps, as we honor our heroes, what goes through our minds? It's a chance for some deep reflection. To honor our heroes, 
I think we can start by living every day with our core values in mind. These service men and women gave their lives, not so that we could honor them, but so that the nation could survive. The best way to honor them is for each of us to be a leader. For each of us to uphold our core values on a daily basis and serve. If we do that, our country will truly be the land of free and all of the brave. I wish you all great success in the field of Thank you.
Everybody else, just hang tight for a second. 